how do you make a thumbnail? I think that was pretty good. I think that works. What's up? My name is Bryce and this is my review of the MacBook Pro M1 Max MacBook. <laughs> I'm actually coming from like a freelance videographer standpoint with this. I've always been into computers, even at a younger age. I have built around five or six custom PCs for both myself and other people. You could say I spent most of my life aspiring to build the perfect desktop PC that could play just about any game out there. I was even considering going to school and becoming a hardware technician for computers. However, things changed for me. I ended up getting a job editing wedding photos with my brother at a company that he was helping manage. And that was where I was introduced to the Mac operating system. At first I didn't really like it, but I started to fall in love with how beautiful laid out everything was, especially the finder windows. Fast forward, I'm working for my friend's business and he gets a new laptop and was generous enough to give me his old MacBook Pro. It was 2015, 15 inch. This was the MacBook that I have always wanted. Thin design, had all the ports, really nice retina screen. It was honestly really fun to use. Even though it wasn't that powerful, it was still a pretty good computer. I actually learned how to use DaVinci Resolve just so I could edit videos on that computer. <laughs> I eventually just stuck with DaVinci Resolve. You know, I flip-flopped back from Premiere to DaVinci Resolve. As I was going, like I was realizing, man, these Adobe products kind of suck on Mac. They're really slow. <laughs> So I was torn. I was like, what am I going to do? Do I get a new laptop or do I just build another PC? I already was banking on wanting to spend around $4,000 and just build like the dream PC that I've always wanted. But there was just something about having a laptop that was so appealing to me. It kind of felt like a pipe dream because yeah, most laptops are good at certain things, but they're not very good at other things. It was hard waiting for something because I looked at so many different Windows laptops and you know, I could never find a Windows laptop that I was pumped about. I was always like, oh, this is cool. Like I was never like, wow, this is amazing. I want this. Yeah, I just wanted to wait. Suddenly Apple announced the M1 Pro and Max. I was absolutely pumped watching that reveal. I knew that these were the laptops that I have been waiting for my whole life. Yeah, sure, like this computer isn't far from perfect. You can barely even play games on this thing for goodness sakes. I think I'm trying to like focus less on gaming these days. Um, my wife bought me a Switch. If I want a game, I'll go over to the couch and play on the Switch. This is the workstation, you know? Like this is where I get my work done. I'm buying this computer for productivity and for work. I do put way too much of my identity in what I own and what I wanted. After I got this computer, um, I was a little bit disappointed in not the computer, but the lack of inspiration that I had. I just thought that when I was going to get the computer, um, all of these ideas were just going to pop in my head and that didn't happen. This computer is simply a tool that we use to make our creativity come to life. It's simply a tool to just take the stuff out of our head and put it onto paper, you know? It's really funny because after I got the computer, I had this week long feeling of like, I'm not creative right now. As the honeymoon phase has lifted, I am blown away by how good this computer is. I'm really impressed by this thing. So the MacBook that I chose was the 16 inch MacBook Pro Max, and I got the 24 gigabyte GPU just because it was like a little bit cheaper. And I only got 32 gigs of RAM. I felt like that was enough. I got one terabyte SSD, and I got the space gray. I think if there was one thing that I wish I changed, I, I kind of wish I got more storage because I'm already at about 500 gigs used. It would be nice to not have to carry around an SSD all the time, you know, like I want to go to a cafe or go somewhere and like just put files on here and edit off of here for like smaller projects, you know? That's the one regret that I have with my choice, but it was already so expensive. I was just like, I'm just gonna go with this. I can't afford both. <laughs> you know, I can't have a PC and a MacBook. So I just chose the most powerful MacBook that I could afford. And the nice thing is that I can just plug it into a screen and it acts as a PC, like it acts as a desktop PC. Like it's so powerful on and off of battery, which I'll show you. It's like, there's no difference in the performance. Pretty much all the Windows PCs out there, you have to be plugged in to get the best power. iMessage and AirDrop. I know that that's like a silly reason to choose a very expensive computer over another, but if I create something that's, you know, like a reel or something quick, or I take a photo, I can edit it on my laptop, 
and then just quickly send it over to my phone. Some of the Windows alternatives are just kind of slow and I just, I don't know. When I switched over to DaVinci Resolve, the first thing I noticed was that the exporting speeds were like so much faster. Everything about DaVinci Resolve is just faster than Premiere. Scrubbing is faster, applying stability is like 10 times faster than Premiere, it's crazy. Like all of these little things that are slow on Premiere, I just feel like DaVinci took that and was like, yeah, we can do it better. And they do. Okay, so just for fun, we're gonna do a battery life test. I'm just gonna take this thing off the plug. Um, I'm gonna wake up at like, I don't know, 8 a.m. I'm gonna do some editing, I'm gonna do some emails. Yeah, I just wanna show you how good the battery life is and this will be an interesting test. I actually haven't really done this before. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Hey y'all, I'm going to uh, the cafe. This is the battery test for the MacBook Pro. I feel like I'm giving um, really high expectations for the battery, but I have confidence. I have confidence that this thing's gonna last all day. <laughs> if it doesn't last the whole day, I'm gonna be so embarrassed. We're going to my favorite cafe called Good Kid, just up the road, let's go. So this is usually my setup. I have the MacBook here, and then I have a 27 inch monitor that I'm usually editing on. I'm usually plugged in to power, so I don't know if this is gonna like drain the power of the MacBook, but we're at about 79% right now, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and edit for like the next hour and just see where we're at. that was informative at all. If you have a day where you're like, oh, I forgot my battery charger at home. It's just nice to be like, oh, I don't have to worry so much. This is a fun test because I wanna talk about the microphone. The microphone on this thing is like hilariously good. Sometimes I actually use this microphone for videos just to record my voice instead of using like an actual microphone. If you haven't noticed yet, I've actually been using this microphone this entire video. Everything is actually being recorded on this computer right now. I just have Adobe Audition open right now and I am recording straight onto the computer. And my camera's over there, boom, 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 light. Everything sounds great. If you don't have a microphone, and you like spent all of your money on just the MacBook, then like, I still think the MacBook is perfectly fine if you were just gonna use it as your main microphone for, you know, until you were able to afford one. This is the MacBook Pro microphone. And then this is the Rode VideoMic Pro. This is usually what I do for my videos. And then this is a Rode lav mic that I have hooked up right to my shirt here. I just feel like it's competing really well with these different microphones, you know? It's nice to have that option. So one of the main topics that I wanted to talk about was just the overall speed. This thing is just blazingly fast. It's fast to the point where I don't really think about what I'm doing as much. Like I don't really think about speed anymore. Any sort of footage that I put onto the timeline, this thing just handles it. For example, I was filming a recap video for a dance event and I rented a Sony a7S III and I was shooting in, I wasn't shooting in the highest codec, I was shooting 4K60. Those files are pretty heavy. As you can see, the footage here is just scrubbing like butter. It was very easy to edit. 
I feel like I was able to just put a whole timeline together without any hiccups. And keep in mind, this is editing on a 4K timeline right now. So if you go down to like a 1080p timeline, everything is just so smooth, it's crazy. On my old laptop, I could barely edit like my Sony a7 III footage. I don't know what it is about the a7 III footage, but it's very hard to handle for most computers. And the exporting speeds are just like a huge reason why I I upgraded because there's been so many times where I need to send something to a client real quick. Even if that's just like a draft file, I don't wanna have to export it so many times. I wanna be able to export projects quickly and then just like send it over to them so I'm not wasting any time. I used to edit these videos for my friends uh, dance company where it would be like a 45 minute long instructional video and it was just cuts, color grading. Those videos would take 45 minutes to an hour sometimes to export. That was painful because sometimes I would export it and then my internet at the time was super slow. So it would be like an hour and a half of me waiting for it to be uploaded. And then sometimes I would upload it and my friend would text me and be like, hey bro, you spelled uh, this person's name wrong. And I'd be like, no, <laughs> I don't wanna have to deal with that anymore. It's such a waste of time. What I would do is like, I would start the export and then I would go and like walk my dog or take my dog to the park or like go work out. I had to do that multiple times a week. Those same 45 minute videos, on this thing they export in like 8 minutes. All I have to do is like press export, I don't know, go get some snacks. I literally barely have to do anything before everything is finished exporting. Even when I make like a 1 minute reel, it takes like 10 seconds to export and then I can just like quickly send it over to the client. That exporting speed to me is enough to justify spending four thousand dollars on this computer i'm saving me so much time i'm saving the client so much time so being able to edit anywhere is awesome that is also one of the reasons why i got the macbook because i like going to cafes you know i like going over to sit on my couch and edit sometimes if i don't want to edit and I just want to like write some notes or write a script or something or just like send some emails. It's nice to just like get away from the office, get away from like the desk. You and know? yeah, even if I'm on site too, it's really, it's nice. really nice because I can show the client what we're filming or whatever. I can show them footage, photos. I can do some editing while there's some downtime, say at like a really long shoot. Not many of us are traveling these days. I haven't traveled in like two years. Things are opening up, which is great. And I'm very pumped about it. My wife and I want to travel. I want to start traveling more because I miss a lot of people around the world that I know. These are some other things that I love. The 120 hertz screen. The keyboard is amazing. It's just like very satisfying to type on. I love the trackpad, but I also really don't like trackpads. I just feel like they're so unnatural to use, especially when you're trying to like get work done. I just like find them awkward and like some people love it, but I've never liked trackpads. Even though their trackpad is amazing, I still would rather use a mouse. And that's probably because I grew up playing PC games. I still hold my hands as if I'm about to press WASD by default. The screen quality, what can I say? It's so contrasty and just so beautiful to look at. The speakers are actually pretty good. Sometimes I would rather use this MacBook as a speaker for like playing music than my actual little speaker. There's a lot of people on YouTube that have done more technical reviews than I have on this. You know, they've shown you specs, they've lined it up against other computers. I just want something that I know is gonna work for me and I know that is gonna get the job done at a very efficient pace. If you're like me and you're a solo freelancer and you just want a computer that is gonna like guarantee your workflow to speed up and it's gonna be a pleasure to use, something that you're gonna be able to use for a long time I really do highly recommend this computer. If you want like something a lot cheaper, maybe look into the new Mac Studio because I mean, that thing's pretty sick. The baseline Mac Studio, it has the same specs as this computer, but it's like half the price. So if you just want a desktop, that might be a route for you. The 14 inch I've heard is also pretty good. It still stacks up really well and it's a lot smaller. A little bonus one, a lot of people are complaining about the notch. It's so minor, like I don't even notice it anymore. I ended up seeing a video by Sarah Dietschy and she mentioned this app called Top Notch. Because the blacks in the screen are so dark and saturated, when you turn on Top Notch, it actually hides the entire notch. Yeah, if you wanna get rid of the notch, just download Top Notch. 
Okay, well, that's pretty much it. If I missed anything, I encourage you to send me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. It really helps me out with the algorithm on this channel. So, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.